After now you're an adult, when you're out there in the real world, if you don't talk to strangers, you're broke. Taking not stupid risk, but calculated risk. How can I use the least amount of money, but get my business going? So just because the business fail, it doesn't mean you fail. They're two different things. Need motivation? Watch a top 10 with Belief Nation. Top 10, I got a top 10. Got my motivation high for my top 10. Gotta learn from the wise women and men. All my life, like now. Hey, it's Evan Carmichael, and I make these videos because you are probably the most ambitious person in your circle, but you know you're capable of more. And you get that push by surrounding yourself with the best. So today, let's learn from one of the best, Dan Locke, and my take on his top 10 rules to success. Enjoy. Okay, let's kick it off with rule number one, focus on the market. To me, market always comes first and product comes second. I wanna find out what are the needs in the marketplace that are not being filled that's not being filled i want to see what problems are not being solved i always say that every problem is a product i want to find out where are people frustrated about a certain thing now of course if you want to create a new category you want to be a category category king you want to be tap into a blue ocean that's something that no one's ever no one's ever done that's perfectly fine if that's your goal but from my perspective most people simply don't have their abilities most people they are too green it takes some skills to do that but if you this is the first couple of businesses you are much safer and wiser just to see what's out there right now what's already selling what are people already searching for? And let's say if you are selling something online, what are people searching for and already buying on Amazon? What are people already buying from other e-commerce sites? What are people buying in terms of keyword research? What what keywords are they typing into Google? And you can easily go to Google and the, the keyword tool that you can find out. How much search volume are there? Are people actively looking for solutions to solve their problems? Rule number two, expand your comfort zone. When you're growing up, what did your parents tell you? Don't talk to strangers, right? You're gonna get kidnapped, right? You're gonna, you're gonna, they're gonna do something harmful to you, right? So it's always growing up, you, you have this fear, you develop this fear of, ooh, I don't wanna talk to, to strangers. It's very scary, it's very, very dangerous. Well, guess what? After now you're an adult, when you're out there in the real world, if you don't talk to strangers, you're broke. In fact, I say the amount of success, the amount of money is in direct proportion to how many strangers that you talk to every single day. Because in business, what is it all about? It is about getting attention. Number one, after getting attention is turning a stranger into a friend, turning a friend into a customer, into a customer to a raving fan. That's what business is all about. That's what sales is all about. It's pretty simple. So if you're not talking to strangers, you are not making more money. You cannot be making more money. Marketing is putting your offer, putting your story, putting your product in front of people that who didn't know you before. They've never heard of you before. That's called marketing. Who are these people? They're all strangers. So that's what I'm talking about. So you gotta be comfortable. So a few things that I did, number one, as an introvert, I joined Toastmasters. I learned how to speak in public to get out of my comfort zone so that I can be a little bit more comfortable talking to people. I forced, I forced myself to go to networking functions, to go to business functions, to talk to people, to learn to ask questions, even though it was uncomfortable, but I knew I need to get out of my comfort zone. So now through training and through conditioning that I could be an extrovert when necessary. Now, most of the time I'm still very private, right? I could be in my room just thinking and doing and brainstorming and reading whole day and not talk to a single person the whole day. And I'm very comfortable with just being by myself. Or I could go out there and I could talk to a huge group of audience or even connecting with you on social media. I'm perfectly okay as well. So it's trained. Don't feel like, oh, this is who I am, yes, by nature, you're naturally more, maybe more like an introvert, but through time, through skills, 
through training, you could expand your comfort zone. Rule number three, push through failures. So just because the business fail, it doesn't mean you fail. They're two different things. What it means is maybe you're lacking some skills to make the business work. That's what, it's like, let's think about this. You, how, how many doors you were knocked on? Hundreds, thousands. So do you knock on two doors and you get a no? And you say, man, I can never do sales. I'm not a good salesman. Forget this, man, forget it. Or is it just because you don't make the sale? No different. If you think your business as a sale, you got your first no. You knock on that first door, you get a first no. Yeah. Then what do you do as a salesperson? Next door. Next door, and you get a no again. Yeah. But then how many doors you knock until you get a yes? And then once you get that yes, it makes up all the losses. It doesn't matter how many times. No one cares about my 13 failures once you made it. Nobody cares. Now I do share because I think that inspires people. But nobody cares. Did you ever have like a like a point like seventh or eighth time after that business? Like man, maybe like maybe I should you know go back to Target or like you know what I mean? Like yeah, of course. And I would be lying if I say no. Right, yeah. Right, right. But but you just kept you just but, it, emotions, but, right? but it was a motivation though. It's because I was lo I lost so much money in the businesses. In order to pay it back, I had to make it work. Right. Right. So I knew I couldn't pay it back if I just worked for someone else. Because I was, by the time the 13 business failures, I was $150,000 in debt. Wow. wow. 150K, 20 years old. Mm. Borrowed from family and friends and credit card. So how am I gonna pay that off? Making two, three K a month. Forget it. So I had to make it work. Right. I can tell you if the 14th one didn't work, 15, it doesn't matter. Because compared to other, I look at other people, I ask myself, and you should ask yourself, am I dumber than everybody else? Do I work less hard than everybody else? If they can make it, why not you? So I ask myself, very honest, I work harder than anybody else. I could outwork and outlearn and outsmart them. And I did. Rule number four, double down on your learning. Double down on your learning. You see, most people during time of self-isolation, what do they do? They watch Netflix, they watch TV, they play video games. That's their choice. But wouldn't it be smarter to now take these times that you normally wouldn't have, go listen to that podcast, watch more educational videos, learning, take some courses online, Learn from other people. Read a book, read a Kindle. Do something to upgrade your skills. Now is the time to learn. Now is not the time to waste time. See, the world kind of, at the moment, kind of freeze. Everything kind of slows down. Everybody slows down. Now is time for you to prepare yourself emotionally, but also mentally as well. So that when things return back to kind of normal, you're there, you're prepared. It's very, very critical, don't waste time. Hi, this is Dan Locke. I want to share with you a lesson from Evan Carl Michael's new book, Built to Serve. This section is about making money from your purpose. You have to embrace that. If you never learn how to make money from your purpose, you'll always end up needing a day job and your purpose will become a hobby. If that sounds like a great life to you, then I'm happy for you, if not, then you need to figure out a money-making model that makes sense, one that is consistent, one that is significant, one that can pay you so you can quit your job and succeed to the point where you are providing jobs for others and helping even more people. You see, money is nothing more than a byproduct of value creation. The more people that you serve, the more successful that you will be. So to have long-term success is not just built to last or, or built to sell or even built to scale, it is built to serve. And this book will teach you exactly how to do that. Rule number five, focus on the speed. Most entrepreneurs, how many of you fish? Any, anyone fishes here, likes fishing, great, great. Most entrepreneurs, this is what they do. They fish, they try to get customers, they try to get leads, they go online, they go to networking, or they go to an event like this, try to get deals, trying to get opportunities. But sometimes they actually, they're fishing in the, in the wrong lake. 
they're fishing in the wrong spot. The people they're looking for, the customers, the clients they're looking for, they're actually not in that lake. They're fishing in the wrong place. They're selling to the wrong market. Is that possible? Yes or no? It's possible. Or here's how they fish most of the time. They fish with a spear. So they look. They look and try to catch one. Oh, damn. And they try to catch one. Oh. Spend a lot of time hunting, looking, right? Or sometimes, a little bit better, they try to fish with like a one fish hook with no bait though. Because whatever they're selling is not very compelling. So, you know what happens when you fish with no bait? Right? It becomes, it's not a fishing game, it's a sitting game. You see for a long time, right? If you're a little bit, bit, bit better, a little bit better, you get a little bait, what the fish likes to eat, and then you catch a fish, right? That's how most people do it. Would you like to know how I do it? Yes. Here's how I fish. <laughs> Remember this. I don't fish with a spear. I want multiple fishing rods on a boat, and I want hundreds of these boats. I don't want to fish one at a time because it's not efficient. It is too slow. Write it down. Money loves speed. It's easier to grow faster than to grow slower. It's easier to scale faster than to scale slow. Rule number six, cut the non-essential spending. Now it's time to go lean. Groceries, mortgage, your rent. Yes, we need all that. But what about the other expenses? Do we actually need the cable TV, right? If you have Netflix, maybe you don't need cable TV, right? You look at all those expenses, maybe that big vacation that you were planning to take, now you have the extra cash, put that in your emergency fund. That big home renovations that you were thinking, now you're gonna delay them. That new car you're gonna buy, delay it. Cut all non-essential spendings, period. Rule number seven, set expectations. If you're single, make sure you have that conversation early up front. In the beginning, the lust takes over, I get it. We're all humans, right? You better very early on in the dating stage, have the conversation with your girlfriend. Honey, I'm gonna become wealthy. It's my number one focus. Are you on board? Are you not on board? If she thinks you're Crazy, it's not gonna work. You gotta find a new one. You gotta have someone and say, good, I'll, I'll support you on that. It's a set expectations. This is who I am. This is what I'm striving for. I am not a typical boyfriend. I'm very busy. I'm working on my business. If you expect certain things you expect from most boyfriends, I'm not your guy. Early upfront, set expectations. Rule number eight, solidify your offer. You see, when it comes to generating revenue online or scaling your business on the internet, there are only two things you need to pay attention to. Number one is your traffic, and then it's your conversion, which is your funnel, your sales process, everything that you do, your offer, your pricing. So you have your traffic, and then you have your conversion. Well, it's no good to just try to drive traffic to your website if your offer doesn't convert. Attention, traffic, eyeballs, don't pay bills. You need to be able to have an offer that converts. So how do you solidify your offer first? You wanna have something that actually works. Then you can run some paid traffic, doesn't matter if it's Instagram, Facebook, Google, depends on who you're targeting to. And you wanna run some traffic to that offer to make sure that it actually sells, to make sure it converts visitors that's coming in to buyers. That's the very first step. You need to be able to do that. Rule number nine, take calculated risks. If you have identified the needs and the demand already, now you just need to think about, hmm, I wonder what product I could create to help them solve that particular problem. Now you have minimized your risk. Or if there's a huge marketplace out there that's being created by other people, a smarter entrepreneur would be thinking, how can I kind of ride that wave? How can I tap into that? Example, instead of you trying to come up with the next thing to maybe compete with Apple, the next iPhone, 
you're no Steve Jobs, I'm no Steve Jobs, chances are that's not gonna happen. But you could probably have a very decent business to sell iPhone cases. You might have a very decent business to sell maybe both a protective shield that protects people's iPhone. So you think about because of a company created such a massive demand for this particular product, what are some of the complementary products that you could sell, right? That it's like you think about in the ocean, you have the big whale, right? The big whale that's swimming in the ocean. You have that little fish that attach yourself to that big whale, right? Just the leftover from the big whales alone, you could have a very, very successful and profitable business without a lot of the risk, without guessing. Well, I guess people want it. I guess there might be demand for it. No, you know, because this is this marketplace out there, there's this this massive demand that's being created. You just kind of tap into that. That's a very, very smart way. I call that chicken entrepreneurship, right? That you are like, you're being a little chicken. You're a little bit afraid. You're being conservative, taking not stupid risk, but calculated risk. How can I use the least amount of money but get my business going, right? Then from there, once you have accumulated capital, once you've you kind of have some success under your belt, then you can do bigger things versus I'm going to invent the next thing that's going to be the next iPhone, better than the iPhone. Well, chances are you're not going to do that. You're not Elon Musk. You're not Steve Jobs, right? Let's just face it. And rule number 10, the last one before a very special bonus clip is have leverage. You want to create a system that would create those results predictably even when you are not there. This is where most entrepreneurs got stuck because at the zero to million dollar phase, you are the go-to person. Chances are you're the number one sales person for the company. You are the rainmaker. You are the one that's connecting with customers. You know all the customers. You have the relationships. You're bringing in the money. You're doing probably a lot of the work still at that level, but now you can't because the capacity issue, right? You hit that glass ceiling. From one to 10 million, now you need systems. Why do you need systems? Because then you can bring in people who are better than you that could run those systems to create the same result as if you were there. From that one to 10 million. And this is what stops most entrepreneurs because what, what got you to that one million won't get you to that 10 million. A lot of the habits, a lot of things that worked in the past that you could grind it out, you cannot grind it out at, at that new level. I always say you could hustle your way to six figure, you cannot hustle your way to seven figure. At seven figure, you need leverage and you leverage people, systems, processes to create more results, to create more impact, to create more value in the marketplace. Now I've got a special bonus clip that I think you're gonna enjoy. But before that, it's time for the question of the day. I wanna know what was your single biggest takeaway from this video and your plan of action for the next week. When you watch something and get motivated and just get inspired, you have a 35% chance of actually following through. But when you get motivated and then you actually create an action plan for what you're gonna do, you increase it from 35% to 91% chance of you actually following through. And when you share your plan publicly, Publicly, that jumps to 95% chance of following through. So I want that for you. I want to know your single biggest takeaway from this video and your plan of action for the next week. Put it down in the comments below so I can celebrate you. Now in Traffic Secrets, Russell talks about it, which is something that I do as well. It's called the Dream 100 concept. What does that mean? It means that you want to identify and find 100 dream partners. Those who already have the traffic, they could be an influencer. They could be a blogger, they could be a YouTuber. Someone who already has attention in the marketplace. Someone who is already talking to your ideal customers. What blogs do they read? Where do they hang out? What videos do they watch? They're already paying attention to these influencers. Then the Dream 100 concept is simply you approach them and you say, hey, you know what? I've got a proven offer here, right? I am willing to pay you an affiliate commission. I'm willing to pay you a certain percentage for every single sale that you make. So you leverage their existing traffic because that's the fastest way to do it, right? You're essentially borrowing that traffic from them. You say, hey, you've got the audience, you've got the attention, I've got a proven offer, can we work something together? It's that simple. Once you could do that, if your offer converts and your affiliate partners, your dream 100, they're making money, 
they will be more than happy to continue to promote. Now you're earning more profits, you're earning more money. Hi, this is Dan Locke. If you're a fan of Evan's work, if you want to know exactly how to model my success, I want to invite you to join me for a special online training. All you have to do is click on the link below. You can join me for absolutely no charge. So click on the link below and I will see you in class. If you want 10 more awesome rules from Dan Locke, check out the video right there next to me. I think you'll enjoy it. Continue to believe and I'll see you there. If you just read a book, a book a month, 12 books a year, it will give you a huge, huge advantage, unfair advantage over everybody else.